Greetings, everyone. Today is Tuesday, October 20th. The time is 4.50 p.m. and the temperature is 11 degrees Celsius. I'm here in Ramson Park in the Summer Hill neighborhood in Toronto. And the plan for this walk is to head over to Avenue Road and then I'll walk north for a block up to McPherson Avenue, which is one of my favorite residential streets in the city. And I'll make my way over to Young Street and then I'll cross Young Street into the Rosedale neighborhood. And I'll go for a walk along Chestnut Park, which is another one of my favorite residential streets in the city. I thought, seeing as fall seems to be in full swing, it would be a particularly good time of year to explore these streets. I did record a walk down McPherson last year, but I haven't been back this year. And I've ridden my bike down Chestnut Park earlier. This is Avenue Road. Just to the south of here on the left is the Yorkville neighborhood and the Annex neighborhood is on the right. That would be just past Davenport Road. So I'm now currently walking north on Avenue Road. And this area is just to the north of downtown. The Summer Hill neighborhood, which I'm in right now, is loosely bound by Davenport Road to the south. And it goes north to just south of St. Clair Avenue. And to the west, it's bound by this street here, Avenue Road. And then to the east, it would be Young Street, although just past, or past the Summer Hill LCBO station, which is where the CP rail tracks are. It goes east all the way over to Mount Pleasant Road. So the best way to get a feel for the size of Summer Hill is to pop into Google Maps and just type Summer Hill and it'll give you a nice outline of the neighborhood. That's the start of DuPont Street. And I think McPherson Road actually continues on just to the north here on the left side, but the part we'll be walking on is to the east of Avenue Road. So we'll start by going through this small parquette named after Jay McPherson. I believe he was a famous Canadian poet. Feel free to correct me on that. And given that Halloween is just around the corner, I, I would expect to see some Halloween decorations on some of these houses. And there's certainly been a lot more squirrels out than you would normally see at this time of year. So this is McPherson right here. Oh, there's another squirrel. There's certainly a lot of beautiful old homes on this street. And unlike the Rosedale neighborhood, which I'm about to walk through, once I get to the end of this street, the homes here are a lot more compact. I'll notice they're rubbing shoulder to shoulder, and in a lot of cases there are row houses or duplexes.
If money were no object, I think this would pretty much be my ideal street in the city of Toronto to buy a house. And it would probably be something like one of these guys. It's quite close to the Rosedale and Summerhill subway stations, as well as Bloor Young and Bay Station. And the Summerhill neighborhood along Young Street has lots to offer, and of course you're a very close walk to downtown. There's some kind of spooky dinosaur. I think I read the neighborhood of Summer Hill itself just has a little over 5,000 residents who live here. So it is mostly low density housing. You could probably guess the average income here is a bit higher than most parts of the city, but it's still about a third of what it will be when I enter Rosedale. This here is Molson Street. It's a rather short street. I wonder if there's any affiliation to the brewery. I don't know anything about trees, but if I were to guess, that would be a silver birch. I'm sure someone's already starting to type their comment up telling me I'm wrong. The average home in the city of Toronto is currently worth about a million dollars, but they would be well north of that in this area. That's kind of neat. And some of these old homes are absolutely huge inside. They're quite deep. There's an interesting row of what are surely really old row homes. A lot of the really older row homes don't have particularly good fire protection between the units, so if one would catch fire, you'd lose pretty much the entire block. Looks like there used to be a window on the upper right hand part of that house. It's really amazing how unique all of these homes are from one another. It's not something you see in modern subdivisions.
crops. So I'll take a look heading to the west down McPherson. And just up here on the left is what I believe is an old church. But it's got real estate and development signs all over it. That would be this thing right here, but it's kind of covered by the trees. I don't know what the story is behind that one. And this is Young Street just up ahead. So I will cross over. This is where McPherson ends. And it goes by another name on the other side of Young. So now things are a bit more urban. And I'll head south down to Roxboro, and that should take me over to Chestnut Park. To look south towards downtown. Just to the right, a lot of those towers are part of the Yorkville neighborhood. That's Rocks, Roxborough Street West. And this will be Roxborough Street East I'll be turning left onto. The last time I came down here on my bike, Chestnut Park was, the street itself was ripped up. It was being resurfaced, so hopefully all the construction has cleared up, although that was back early in the summer, so I'd imagine things would be better now. It sounds like I just missed a subway going by. There's a look along line one, that's northbound. The next stop would be Summer Hill Station. And just a few blocks to the south of here would be Rosedale Station. Actually, there it is right there. Would be kind of neat if I caught a train going through right now, but I guess it's just not my lucky day. And this here is Chestnut Park. It kind of goes north and then it'll head east, but there are a few, few little parts where it splinters off and heads south and reconnects to Roxboro. I'll show you what I mean when we get there. But this street is sort of known for its very large homes, the old school street lamps, and the cobblestone 
sidewalks. And when people talk about Rosedale, often this is the kind of street they have in mind. In my opinion, it is the nicest street in Rosedale. Certainly not the kind of neighborhood where you grab the rake and go out and rake your own leaves, that's for sure. There's a whole army of people. And look at that car, wow. I'll just mosey on out of the way of these people walking in my direction. Pre-COVID days, that wouldn't have been a thing, but these days you try to keep your distance whenever possible. I was thinking of going to the bridle path and doing a walk I promised I would this afternoon, but I sort of had a last second change of heart and decided to come record this walk. And here's one of those smaller streets that connects Chestnut Park down to Roxboro. These are not your typical dollar store Halloween decorations. This is the corner of Chestnut Park and Chestnut Park. I 
I wouldn't even want to speculate what a lot of these houses are worth. Certainly north of five million. Although if money were no object, I would still choose McPherson, the street I walked down at the start of this walk. I just kind of prefer its urban character to here. Call me nuts, but I think you'd be doing pretty well for yourself if you lived there as well. Most of us in the city live in apartments or condos these days. I did have a couple of friends who rented a basement in a house, not on Chestnut Park, but just around the corner from here. And aside from the occasional Getty Lee sighting, one of their takeaways from this area was to be very aware of luxury SUVs roaming around, but don't flinch when they see another person. Stop signs are optional here. As are using your blinkers to indicate a turn. So just a word of caution. That is secondhand knowledge, but I have experienced some of that myself riding my bike around this neighborhood. I think I talked a bit more about this neighborhood in detail on my last bike ride through here. So if you are interested in that and to see what it looked like in the summertime, you could probably easily find that if I forget to link to it in the description, which I surely will. And we are back to Roxborough. So from here on, I don't really have a plan. Maybe I'll just wander around uh, Rosedale a bit more. Ooh, that sun is bright. It's one of the rare times you've been able to get a clear glimpse of the sun today. It's been kind of overcast. Not as gloomy as previous days, but it's certainly been a while since we've had really blue skies. So that is Mount Pleasant Road, just up ahead here. But I will turn south down Rentham Place. And I think not too far to the east of here, there's a nice little park called the Craigley Gardens. Maybe I'll head over there to finish up.
That's of course, assuming I don't get lost along the way. Well, Toronto is built mostly on a north to south, east to west street grid. The streets around Rosedale are kind of windy. And that may be by design, just to prevent people from using them as through streets. And this is Crescent Road. Let's look north up Mount Pleasant Road. I've done some bike rides along there, but never recorded a walk. What can Brown do for you? You can move your damn truck. That's certainly enormous. A property like that could very easily belong to a consulate office. Even the Halloween decorations here are a bit classier. And just to the south of here should be the Sherburne TTC subway station. And to the southeast of here would be the next stop over Castle Frank. So those would probably be the closest stations within walking distance. Although I can't imagine transit usage being that high in this neighborhood. It could even be single digits. And I don't see a street sign. Is this where I want to turn left to get to the park?
I guess they just assume you know where you're going here in Rosedale. So this is South Drive, South <laughs> Drive. So I think there's a that nice park I talked about is just up ahead here. I've got some vague memories walking around this neighborhood from a walk I recorded last year. I don't recall going down this particular stretch. May Street, here's a different kind of surface. That must be expensive to maintain. Look at that thing over there, wow. Looks like one of those southern US mansions you see with those big pillars in front. I don't know how well you can see that from this view. It looks like it's fenced in all around anyways. And the 75 Sherburn bus makes it makes its way up here. So I think this is the park just up ahead. You could probably Head down there, it says Nature Trail. There we go. I even remembered the name. All right, I'll head into the park and take a quick look around. That trail I just saw is a leads along a ravine, I believe, just off in the distance there. There's a number of monster homes backing onto this park. Something 
things will get free shipping in time. We all have a I haven't yet seen where these alleged gardens are, where this park gets its namesake. Wow, look at the back of this thing. And this appears to be where the park comes to an end. <coughs> it's always nice during times of the coronavirus when people just openly cough around others without covering their mouths. It's kind of disgusting. It would be disgusting without the virus. All right, I hope you enjoyed this walk initially around Summer Hill and then through the Rosedale neighborhood. There are links to my Patreon and Instagram in the description, as well as access to channel membership on the main page. All right, I'm going to end this now, so thanks for watching, and I will catch you on the next one.